Welcome everyone to the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals podcast series featuring great discussions, insight, and resources on all things related to education and administration. Welcome back everybody to the MASSP podcast series. My name is Ryan Casey and I am joined once again by my new uh, co-host, Nina Davis, who is the MASSP president and the principal at Lance Cruz Middle School East. And I don't know if I get to keep saying new. This is maybe the third or fourth one we've done now, Nina, but thanks for joining me once again. Thanks for always including me, Ryan. So Nina and I wanted to really focus our the next few podcast episodes on just what are some cool things that are going on at different schools, buildings, districts across the state. And so today we are excited to bring in Amy Paschik, who is the uh, assistant principal at Howell High School. Amy, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to share one of the cool things we have started at Howell this year. Awesome. And Amy's going to be talking to us about Hope Squads and just what a cool name for a project, right? So number one, if anything, anytime you're starting a new initiative, if it's got a great name, it's got a chance, right? So Hope Squads, we're excited to learn about that. Before we jump into that, Amy, can you just give us a little bit of background information about, uh, about yourself? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Amy Pashak. I am the assistant principal at the freshman campus at Howell High School. Uh, this is my eighth year there, and we do have a separate building for our ninth graders. So I oversee the, the 600 ninth graders that are in the building, but work with the, the whole team here at Howell High School. So, and this is my first year being also on the board of directors representing all the APs in the, the central division. So thanks again for having me. Thanks so much, Amy, for being here today. Some of our board members had the chance to listen to you share out about the Hope Squad at Howell High School, and it received a lot of positive feedback. So many were talking about how they could do something similar in their own buildings. Um, so can you share a little bit with us just in terms of how it works? Absolutely. So Hope Squad is a peer-to-peer -peer suicide prevention program, and um, it really is about empowering students to support their peers because uh, we find and we know that students are more likely to go to a friend um, or someone their same age when they're struggling rather than going to an adult. So instead of you know, focusing the energy on staff, we're focusing our energy right now on students and equipping them with skills that they need to be able to support their, their peers in a time of crisis or if they're struggling in any way with, with their mental wellness. So there, there's a lot more to it, but that gives you the, the kind of general gist that it's a peer-to-peer we train about 60 students and then they can then have the tools they need uh, to support their peers throughout the year. Obviously, it's, it's pretty obvious or clear to understand maybe the why behind why you want to do this. But can you give us a little bit about, um, you know, how did you get this started? Uh, a little more, I know it's a little early in the process, I, I believe it sounds like when talking to you earlier. So kind of where you're at and what are the plans long-term down the road once you've implemented it? Yeah, so absolutely. A couple of years ago, we attended a great MASSP event, uh, um, the Student Mental Health Conference, and our group of students got really excited, and we formed our own student um, mental health committee called the Lighthouse, and it was actually a student of ours, uh, Molly, who did some investigating on her own, and found um, Hope Squads, which is actually based in Utah. So it is an organization, a nonprofit organization that does provide all the materials, all the training um, for a nominal fee and uh, gives you, you know, everything you need to launch it. So it was a student that came to us that said, hey, I really think we should try this in, in Michigan. Um, we, are, we are the first, to my knowledge, that have launched this, but it is a nationwide um, organization. And so it was a student that came to us and then it came down to finding some funding for it. And luckily some COVID dollars came through to do exactly what we wanna do, which is support student mental health. 
and we were able to to buy a four year program. Um, and from there, we had to identify our students. So the students actually picked the students that are part of Hope Squads. We asked our entire student body, who are the top three people you go to when you're having a tough time? And it was from there that we did lots of sorting and figuring out who are the people in our building that are truly the listeners and supporters. We reached out to them and we dwindled it down to about 60 students. Um, did something similar with staff, reached out to them who would be interested in being advisors. And um, we were able to come up with six advisors. So we have six groups of about 10 students. And um, we are about two months into the training process. Our advisors were trained over the summer and now our students are going through um, a QPR curriculum, um, which is completely supported uh, to do suicide prevention work. And then this spring, we will launch it to our entire student body, let our student body know what it is, how it works, how you get connected, and really let our, our students know these are 60 people that, that have your back. And it's really exciting, but we're, we're definitely in the beginning stages, but there's lots of enthusiasm as we, as we start to roll this out. Like how you asked the students who they would want to be involved, right? Not just who wants to do it, right? Because who wants to volunteer and who wants to be part of this? Because this is there's gonna be a lot of sensitive information that is that is discussed and that's part of this this initiative, right? Dealing with students who are um, contemplating suicide or you know these negative self thoughts and things like that. So letting them pick. They're going to be picking students who are trustworthy, who are sincere, who, like you said, are, are great listeners. And so I really appreciate that approach versus administration just selecting, quote unquote, the, the good kids or the honor kids or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's such a clever way to let kids really show you who are the, the like you mentioned, the great listeners and that are, are trustworthy. And it would be probably up for the challenge that their peers, you know, are already probably confiding in, in, in some way, shape or form already. Yeah. And it's really been a great opportunity to, to elevate a variety of student voices, because I think as leaders, we do kind of have our go-to students and staff that are often our, you know, early adopters and are eager to do everything. And, and this provided an opportunity for a variety of student voices and, and students that are, you know, maybe kind of fall under the radar, but to their friend group are everything. And um, it's pretty exciting to see the wide variety of students that that are part of our Hope Squad. So you're right, Ryan, it, it is exciting and in a unique way, a little bit, you know, cumbersome in some ways to try to sort through all that, but definitely worth it. I think we have a great group of students. So I love you, Ryan, but you're still in my thunder. I also love that this is student led. I think that is huge that you know, this is that the students came forward and this is something that they recognize um, a need in their, their building. And, and, you know, it's peer mentoring at its best. So Amy, I already, you know, we mentioned that our board members were really excited about this and I can see other principals wanting to jump into something like this. So can you talk a little bit about like, do you think this is something other buildings could implement? And specifically, you know, someone like myself, I'm at the middle school level. Do you see um, that this is something that could be incorporated at a lower level? Yes, and that was something that was really um, impressive about um, the actual organization, Hope, because they have curriculum for elementary, middle, and high school, and it's really four years of curriculum, so that if you have the same, for the high school level, it's four years, for the middle school, it's three years, um, but if you have students repeating it, they're not going through the same lessons every year, which is which is exciting. Um, and so it absolutely can be replicated. Um, and that was really uh, an appeal to us because we are launching at the high school level, but there are, there are organizations and schools that are doing it both at the middle school and the elementary level with targeted curriculum for those grade levels for the advisors to work with the HOPE squad. So, Absolutely. And um, that's a goal of ours. I, I think I'm, I'm stealing thunder here and, and jumping ahead, but that is a definite um, goal of ours is to hopefully see it as a K-12 Hope Squad um, program here at Howell. Would you say, Amy, um, 
I know it's it's early on again, so you don't have any you know, real data or something that would show, you know, we've had a reduced number of students saying they have these thoughts or these, you know, attempts, whatnot. But uh, what, what's your takeaway so far? Like, in any results that you're seeing? Is there a buzz? Is there, um, you know, what are the positives that are coming out of it so far, even though you're still in, you know, the first few weeks? Yes. Uh, so we have a new um, person in our, our district, uh, mental health specialist that we've hired this year, probably similar to many of you that have some uh, different roles that people are filling. And when she is meeting with students and our counselors are meeting with students, letting them know that we are equal equipping more people in the building to support you, to support their friends. There is a sense of of relief and excitement that just the idea that we're doing that shows that we care, that we want to, um, you know, create as as positive positive and supportive environment as we can. So right now, really the buzz is about like the positive idea that we're doing this work. So, you know, as far as supporting actual students that are going through a crisis, um, that is still in the hands of our of our trusted adults. Um, but them being able to relay the information that there are going to be others in the building that will look out for you and then will be able to refer you to those trusted adults is pretty exciting. So it's definitely come up in meetings with parents. Um, we're actually presenting in a couple of weeks to the Livingston uh, Education um, ISD about Hope Squad to kind of get the word out in the county that we're doing this work. So yeah, there, there's definite positive buzz and it it really feels good to know that we're at least trying, you know, and, and we don't know what the future holds, but we're trying something new and certainly nothing bad can come from trying to better support our students. Okay, Amy, so for those of us that are sold, what advice would you give us in terms of how to, how to start this up at our school? I would uh, definitely recommend to check out the website, um, hopesquad.org. And I would definitely be happy to um, work with any school that's interested because, you know, with any new program, there's it's not perfect. Um, you know, work navigating their curriculum to make it work with our students and our staff. Um, you know, it takes some tweaking. So, um, but but check out their their website. You can see some sample curriculum guides to see if it might work. Um, pricing is very affordable, but there is a cost involved. Uh, so, you know, those those were our first steps: was looking at the curriculum, looking at the resources and looking at the costs, those are kind of your, your first big ones. And once you get that, then it's diving into who are gonna be your advisors. So that's what we started with, who are the adults that wanna run this. Um, once we got them on board, then it's working with them to identify your students. Uh, then once you get your students, you have to find time in the school day for your staff to work with your students. So again, it always comes down to time, which is the most valuable resource. Uh, and at Howell, we're lucky. We have an 85 minute flex period every other day. So there is time built into our school day for our advisors to work with our students. But that's another factor that you really have to keep in mind. Um, you, need, you need the advisors, you need the students and you need the time to be able to do it. But definitely start with looking at, um, at the organization and see if it's something that might, that might work in your school community. Amy, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we know you are busy, so we will make sure you get, get you back uh, out into the hallways and classrooms here in just a moment. Um, do you mind a couple things? First, sharing, um, and when we go to promote this out via email and on social media, do you have any like sort of documents or, or slideshows or anything that maybe you've used to explain to your parents or your staff or what you're preparing for maybe some ISDs that you could share that we could share out? I absolutely do. Um, yeah, we we created a presentation recently that has a good overview. So I'd be happy to share that with you here just in a little bit, Ryan, and so that you can include that. That will give a good overview. And um, again, I'm I'm definitely a resource, and my contact information can definitely be shared with the membership. And happy to help in that way as well too. 
Great. And so we will, we will share Amy's uh, email address or Twitter handle and all that good stuff. So you can reach out. So thank you uh, so much for, for being with us today. And thanks again to my co-host Nina Davis for joining me as well. Appreciate both of you. Thank you, Ryan, again, for always featuring um, our members and going over and beyond to highlight the work that principals are doing across the state. Yes, thank you very much. Well, I enjoyed doing this, and uh, I think our listeners enjoyed it as well. And remember, to anybody that's listening today, you can um, catch this podcast and more anywhere that you get your podcast, including the Apple Podcast Store, and by going to masspcom slash podcast. We are more than halfway uh, into season six of the podcast series. We're going to probably bring you uh, maybe 10 or 12 episodes this year, so much more to come throughout uh, the rest of the school year. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great day. Uh-huh.